Okay, uh, today we're going to be talking about something extremely important, and that is the difference between force diagrams and free body diagrams. We want to know what these two have to do with one another, and how they're similar, and how they're different, and what it means to uh, getting your questions correct when you're solving problems in physics. In a first year physics class, we work with what we call a force diagram to analyze the forces acting on an object. We do this so that we can write a linear net force equation, so Newton's second law, that will allow us to find an acceleration and then work with kinematics if we need to to determine what the problem is asking for. Now, a force diagram essentially takes the whole system and shrinks that system down into a point-like object or particle. And in a force diagram, we do not care where a force is being applied. We only care that it's applied to our system and that it's that interaction is present. So in this case, our system is a ball rolling down an incline. Okay, so in junior physics or your first year physics class, we pretty much just think of, we shrink our objects down to a point-like object. Now in second year college physics class, so we're talking about AP, dual credit, maybe your first class at university, we work with what we call a free body diagram to analyze the forces acting on an object. That's pretty much the only similarity between a force diagram and a free body diagram. Understanding the difference between these two is important because a free body diagram not only shows you which forces act on our defined system, but also shows you where each force is applied. And in college physics, we care where a force is applied once we learn about torque and rotational dynamics. So as such, we're very interested in torques because by Newton's second law for torques, or the net torque equation, we know that this is going to affect the angular acceleration alpha. So for example, if we have a problem where something is rolling without slipping, you want to be able to work with the correct angular acceleration alpha because that's going to affect your linear acceleration as well because A is equal to R times alpha, right? So recognizing this distinction is important when it comes to solving problems because you get extra equations to work with. So not only do you have the A equals R times alpha equation to work with, but you also have the angular version of Newton's second law opening up to you too, because now you can also work with torques, right? So here, if you do not have these two equations at your disposal, you'll either end up in a situation where you can't solve the problem or you'll get an incorrect answer. Okay, so here in this example that we've done some practice on, you'll see that if you have an object rolling, this object is going to experience an increasing angular velocity here. And it's rotating about its axis of rotation. So when we analyze the forces acting on this thing, you'll see that the force of gravity acts on the center of mass. So that is not applying a torque because it acts on the center of mass. The normal force, which for sure acts on the rolling object, does not apply a torque either because the lever arm is here, it's this radius, and the angle between the lever arm and the force is zero. So when we cross the lever arm with the force, you get zero because your sine, sine of zero is zero. The only force that will torque the ball is actually this static friction force which is what causes the ball to roll. So that's really important to keep in mind when you do your Newton's second law for rotation, that this force in this case, this frictional force is the only one that applies a torque to the ball with this axis of rotation. Okay, so I want you all to be very careful with this uh, moving forward. Some indicators that help you realize that you need to consider this is things like the problem mentioning rolling with or without slipping, or if the problem 
even just gives you a moment of inertia, you know that this has to be in play. Okay, so in short, if a problem makes references to anything covered in our rotation units, you need to be thinking in terms of free body diagrams and torques rather than just your force diagrams. So hope this was helpful. Uh, be sure to ask me questions in the comments, and I'll see you in class.